Section 4.2 Interactive Assignment. We're going to consider the data set given in the accompanying table and we're going to complete parts A through D. First question wants us to determine the least squares regression line and we're going to choose the correct answer below. Now the best way to do this is we're going to go ahead and open this data up into StatCrunch. So we're going to click our icon and then we're going to open up the data into StatCrunch. Now the one thing that we should pay attention to is that the first column is X, which is the explanatory variable, and the Y column is the response variable. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select stat, we're going to go to regression, and then select simple linear. We're going to make sure that the X variable is in the X column and the Y variable is in the Y column. We're going to scroll all the way down here and then we're going to make sure that the data says horizontal and vertical lines. Okay, and then we're going to select compute. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this data and I'm going to bring it into my sheet so we can analyze it and answer the question. Okay, so our question is the following. It says determine the least squares line. Okay, the regression line. Okay, so what we're looking for is we're looking for an equation where we have y which is going to equal the slope times the value of x and then plus whatever the intercept is. Okay, so in our equation or in our data you can see that we have the slope here and that is 1.8. So therefore we have the slope of 1.8 and therefore that becomes 1.8x and then plus the intercept and the intercept is given at 1.4 and so therefore it's going to be plus 1.4 so there is the least squares regression line now you can also see that it's written here okay but notice that you have 1.8x listed on the second part and then plus 1.4. So just make sure that you know that that is the same thing. Now if we come back in here and then answer our question, determine the least squares regression line, and we can see that that answer is 1.8x plus 1.4. Okay, now it asks us to graph the least squares regression line on a scattered diagram. Well, we've already done that because if we selected that, here is the least squares regression line. If you highlight it, you're going to see the equation y equals 1.4 plus 1.8x. So let me go ahead and then just copy this here real quick, this graph. Okay, and then let's just make sure that this is going to match our graph that we have in our answer. Okay. So you can see here's a point above the line, there's a point below the line, another point above the line, a point below the line, and this point is right on the line. So when we take a look at our options, okay, we if we look at part B, you're going to see that. You're going to see this line is above, this is below, this is above, this is below, and that point is on the line. Now, let's just make this a little bit clearer so that we can understand what's going on. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw, okay, the, and locate where the origin is. Okay, so this is the zero horizontal axis, and this is the zero y, or the vertical axis there. Okay, so therefore this represents zero, zero, okay. This point here represents negative 2, negative 2 from our data set. This point here represents negative 1, negative 1. Okay, we have another point here which represents 0, 2. This point here represents 1, 3. And then this point here represents 2, 5. Okay. 
And so therefore, this is going to represent our diagram, and therefore we get B. Okay, now we need to look at the next question. It says the equation of the line containing the points negative 2, negative 2, and 2, 5 is Y is equal to 1.75X plus 1.5. We want to compute the sum of the squared residuals of the given data for this line. Okay, so what do we need to do? Well, first and foremost, okay, what we want to do is we want to be able to then determine, okay, the residuals. Now, in order to calculate this, what we need to do is we need to locate where this point negative 2, negative 2 is using this particular equation. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is graph this equation on this scatter plot. So I'm going to go back to Stat, Stat Crunch, okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select graph here. I'm going to scroll all the way down to where it says scatter plot. I'm going to make sure the x variable is the x, the y variable is the y, and then down here it says overlay the polynomial order. And we're going to have that listed as 1 because it's a degree of 1 which is a linear equation. And what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and then we're going to put in the value of our equation. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Okay. And so looking at this equation, we can see that C subscript 0 is the intercept. And the intercept here is 1.5. And then C sub uh, 1 is the slope, which is 1.75. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and now put that in here. So we have 1.5 and then 1.75. And then I'm going to scroll down a little further and make sure the points are displayed. And then a little further down, I'm going to make sure that I have the horizontal lines and the vertical lines. And I'm going to select Compute. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at this graph. So here is my graph. And again, these are my points. I have negative 2, negative 2. This point represents negative 1, negative 1. This point here represents 0, 2. This point here is 1, 3. And then this top one is 2 and then 5. And again, let's go ahead and draw our origin axis. So let's go ahead and do that. So there is our origin. So we know where 0, 0 is located. OK. So now what we want to do is we want to find the sum of the squared residuals. So if you take a look at this first point, we have negative 2, negative 2. Now this point is right on the line, okay? And since it's right on the line, what we're going to do is we want to be able to find the residual of that, okay? The residual is how far away is this point from this line? Well, this point is right on that line, so we should get zero, but let's check that first. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the value of x and then plug it into this equation. So we have y hat, which is equal to 1.75, and then we're going to plug in the value of x and then add 1.5. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we know the value of x is negative 2, and we're going to plug that in for x. Okay, and if we take 1.75, multiply it by negative 2, and let's go ahead and do that on a calculator real quick. 1.75, multiply that by negative 2, and then we're going to add 1.5, and we're going to get negative 2. So that's going to equal negative 2. Okay, so that is the predicted y. So we're going to take that predicted y, Okay, 
and that is negative 2, and that's y hat here. And then we're going to take the value of y and then subtract that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this negative 2, and then we're going to subtract the predicted y. Okay, this ends up becoming negative 2 plus 2, which ends up giving us 0. So that represents the distance from this point to that line. So the residual over here, and I'm going to call this the residual, okay, the residual is 0 because the distance from that point to that line is 0. Okay, and so what do we do with the residual? Well, with the residual in the next column, we're going to square that value. So we're going to take 0 and then square it, and 0 squared is 0. Okay, now let's take a look at the next point. The next order pair is negative 1, negative 1, and we can see here is negative 1, negative 1. It is below the line, so that means this residual should be negative. So one more time in here, we're going to come over here, and then we're going to take 1.75. We're going to multiply it by the value of x, which is negative 1. And then we're going to add 1.5. Okay, neg negative 1 times 1.75 is negative 1.75, plus 1.5 is going to give us negative 0 0.25. Okay, so again, we took our value for x, plugged it into our equation to get the predicted y value. Now we're going to take the y value of our ordered pair, which is negative 1, and then we're going to subtract the predicted, which is negative 0 0.25. Okay, so that ends up being negative 1 plus 0 0.25, which ends up giving us negative 0.75. So that negative 0.75 tells us that this point is below. So the residual here, or the distance from that line to there, is negative 0 0.75. So now we're going to take this negative 0.75 And then we're going to square it in this column. So we're going to take 0.75 and then we're going to square it. And that's going to give us 0.5625. So 0 0.5625. Okay, let's go ahead and continue here. So I've already done that here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow along here. So we're going to take the value of x. We're going to plug it into the equation. And then we end up getting the value of 1.5. And then we're going to take the y value, which is 2, and then we're going to subtract the predicted value of 1.5, and that gives us 0.5. And then 0 0.5 squared is going to give us 0.25. Likewise, we're going to take the value of x, we're going to plug it into the equation, and we get 3.25, which is the predicted value. We're going to take the y-coordinate of 3 and subtract the predicted value to get negative 0.25, which is the residual, and therefore that residual squared is going to give us 0 0.0625. And then finally, we're going to take the last value, x, which is 2, plug it into the equation to get a predicted value of 5. We're going to take the y-value of 5, subtract the predicted value to get us 0. When we square 0, we get 0. Now, what happens here? Well, what happens is, is that when we decide to add this last column, that gives us the sum of the residuals, which is 0 0.8750. So if we take a look at our answer here, that's what we get, 0 0.8750. Let's just clarify that. 
if I take this 0 plus 0.5625 plus 0.25 plus 0 0.0625 plus 0, and that gives me 0 0.8750. Okay, so what does that tell us? Well, again, let's take a look here. What was the residual for 0, 02? Well, it was 0 0.5, it was positive. So therefore, the residual here was 0 0.5. Okay, what was the residual for 1, 3? Well, it is below the line, and we got negative 0 0.25. That is the distance, the y value from here to here. And then from 2, 5, we saw that the residual is 0. Okay, now, is there another way that we can do this without doing this by hand? Yes, there is. We can use stack crunch. Okay, so... What can we do? Well, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to generate and build our equation. Okay, so by doing that, what we're going to do is we're going to build this equation right here. So I'm going to select data, and then I'm going to select compute, and I'm going to say expression. And in this expression, I'm going to write the following. I'm going to take 1.75, okay? Sorry, 1.75, and then I'm going to multiply it by all the x's in there. So we want to make sure that's highlighted. And then I'm going to have the plus button, and then I'm going to put in 1.5, and then I'm in a OK. OK, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I'm going to call this the predicted y value because that's what it is. It's the predicted y value. I'm going to select compute, and then if you notice, there is my numbers. And that should match here, negative 2, negative 0.25, 1.5, 3.25, and 5. Okay, and then what I want to do is now I want to create another column where I'm going to take the y value and subtract the predicted value. So again, I'm going to come back here and select data. I'm going to select compute and an expression. Okay, and then I'm going to build my expression. My expression is I'm going to take the y value Okay, select that, and then I'm going to subtract the predicted y value. So I'm going to make sure I select that, and then select OK. Now, what is that column called? Well, that is called the residual. So I'm going to call that residual, and then I'm going to select compute. Now, let's take a look. 0, negative 0 0.75, 0 0.5, negative 0.25, and then 0. Okay, now the last thing I want to do is I want to find the last column, which is taking the residual and squaring it. So I'm going to build another expression. I'm going to go to data, select compute, and then go to expression. I'm going to select build. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this residual. I'm going to click the up arrow key so I can square it. So that means it's going to be residual squared. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this column residuals squared. I'm going to select compute. And therefore, there is my value for that column. Now, if I want to find the sum of that, what I'm going to have to do now is I'm going to go to Stat, Summary, Stats, Select Column, and then I want to find the sum of the residual squared. So I'm going to select Residual Squared. I'm going to come down here and then select Sum, and then I should get 0 0.875, which is what I get over here. Okay. All right. Now, that's our answer for that. Now, let's move a little bit further down to the next question. Okay. So, the next question is the following. Okay. It says here that we want to find to compute the sum of the squared residuals of the given data for the least squares regression line that was found in part A. We'll recall that that equation was y, which is equal to 1.8x plus 1.4. So let's just do this real quick for the very first one. We're going to take y hat. This is going to be 1.8. We're going to multiply it by negative 2. And then we're going to add the 1.4. Okay, so if we take that 1.8, multiply it by negative 2. And then we're going to add 1.4, then we should get negative 2.2. Okay, 
And then we're going to take the y value, which is negative 2, and then we're going to subtract the predicted y value of negative 2.2, which is equal to negative 2 plus 2.2, which is equal to positive 0 0.2. And then we're going to take that 0 0.2, and then we're going to square it to get 0 0.04. Okay. Now again, if we follow along, we're going to do the same thing here. All right, so I've gone ahead and done that for these results. So now what I want to do is now I want to be able to generate this information on StatCrunch. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, if you notice here, we found these residuals for the Part C. So I'm going to, I'm going to call this column Part C because that's what this one represented was Part C. So these are the residuals squared for Part C. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I'm going to select stat. I'm going to go down here to where it says regression, select simple linear. I'm going to make sure that my x variable is x, my y variable is y. Okay, and then I want to scroll down here. And then what I want to do is I want to find residuals now of that equation, which was the one in part A. And then I'm also going to highlight predicted values. Or I can just go ahead and just select the residuals. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and select compute. So now what it's done is it's created this new column now, which represents the residuals from part A. So I'm going to, I'm going to take this residuals and I'm going to put in parentheses. This is for part A because that's the equation that we're using. Okay, and now what I want to do is I want to take this residuals and I want to square that. So I'm going to go ahead and select data. I'm going to go to compute and then expression. And then what I want to do is I'm going to build this expression and I'm going to take the residuals from part A and then I'm going to square it. And then I'm going to select OK. And then I want to label this by saying that this is the residuals from part A, and that is squared. So now it's created this new column here. And this new column, you will be able to see. Now let's compare that to our table here. OK. So if you notice here, we have the following. OK. We have the residuals, which is 0.2 negative 0.6, 0 0.6, negative 0 0.2, and then 0. And then when we square those values, we get 0 0.04, 0 0.36, 0 0.36, 0 0.04, and then 0. Now we want to find the sum of the residuals squared, and we want to make sure that we get 0 0.80. So we're going to take stat, go to summary stat, select columns. OK, we're going to go down to the column that we just created, which is the residuals of part A squared. And then we're going to scroll down here, and then we're going to select sum. And then we're going to compute, and then we get 0 0.80. And then if we take a look at our answer here in the last part, we will see that the sum of the squared residuals is 0 0.80. So you can either do this by hand, or you can follow it along as if how I did it with using StatCrunch.